It's great when you shut the door, we don't notice. Maybe I've seen too many horror films. This is not a van tour video. Restoring your archaeological remains for you. You can design it different. Or maybe it's my future murderer trying to lure me in. I wish it was just a little bit bigger. A doom kind of way. Hi, I'm Walt, and welcome to the beautiful and intriguing land of Scotland. Join me on my biggest ever road trip around the far north of England and the NC500 in my 20-year-old DIY Renault Traffic camper van. In this epic journey, I learn about myself, the landscape around me, and some of the basics of living in a van on the road. There are lots of ups and downs, twists and turns, and plenty of hidden gems are uncovered along the way as I meander into the wilderness. In this episode, I finally make it to Sky and stay in the southern region for the night where I start reflecting on my journey so far. This leads me to discuss my future plans and think about some of the difficulties I've experienced lately with my van build and what I might change in the future. I initially woke up to this view, having parked somewhere near Ben Nevis the night before. I'm the last one off the mark as usual. There was like four other vans here last night. No phone signal. Let's head into Fort William and see what's next. This is Ben Nevis, right? It wasn't labelled though, so, you know. So this is the day. Just washed my hair in, in the sink. Had a shave. I am two and a half hours away from Sky. Or from this park up that I want to stay at anyway, so I'm just going to go for it. Because it's like two in the afternoon, I've got four hours of light, so I can kind of take my time. I'm just going to have a good day. Yeah, let's do it. Probably a better angle like that, innit? I never really like my hair when it's this short, but it's just easier to like keep it, to like wash it and stuff. Yeah, let's go then. Let's do it. This route had plenty of spectacular viewpoints along the way. I remember this one in particular because it was the first bit of sunshine that I'd experienced for a while, and there was a large group of people out and about on the beach exploring. It just seemed like civilization was around the corner again. I decided to take the road all the way around from Fort William to Sky Bridge and enter that way as it was cheaper than getting the ferry from Malig. I'd say it was one of the most spectacular drives of the whole trip though. I tried to find the location of this, the exact location, but I couldn't quite figure it out. I think it's somewhere along Loch Duick. <laughs> I know it's about 45 minutes before the bridge, or maybe just under that whole drive along this road was just, yeah, pretty special. This valley is sensational. As I entered Sky at the other side of the bridge, I decided to pull over and get my first look at the southern peninsula. So we finally made it to Sky. It just looked magical. Can't believe that this is actually a bit of, well, it's a separate island technically from the British Isles, but yeah. My next mission was to find somewhere to park for the evening on the southern part of the island. So uh, I proceeded to explore the south coast. Yeah, and I did find this little spot here, although I didn't stay here. Three weeks, tomorrow morning, I've been on the road. I'm not sure if that bit of land across is actually mainland Scotland because I'm on the south coast and the rest of Skye is kind of in that direction. I actually can't get over the colour, like the shade of the blue of the sea. Like I don't think we've ever seen sea that... It's almost like just a light blue in the middle. Astonishing really. You can see why it's not very populated though because it's a very mountainous sort of region and uh, there's not a lot, I don't know. Because there's lots of water and stuff, but maybe there's not... I suppose it's quite far north, isn't it? So in the winter it's pretty grim. <laughs> this is just the beginning of... Uh, well, it's the end of March. So we're in spring, so just the first day where there's been a bit of sunlight. Actually, the second day, I think there was one in Galloway as well, wasn't there? Found a slightly different spot. I didn't realise after I parked, it said um, passing place. So... Even though there's someone else there, but they were like a bit more out of the way. Google Maps took me to the wrong place. It was like a passing lay-by. I'd driven past it, but you'd miss it going the other way. So hopefully no one else will show up now, because 
I mean, of course, you could probably squeeze two vans in here, but it's not very level. It, like, I've, I've got it level with my ramps, but so I don't want to move now. These views are so great. Oh, a little bit of daylight in the evening as well. What time is it? It's got to be quarter past seven. Yeah, it's a bit tight for two, really. You'd never get out, would you? This is the moment um, that I've just realised that I've done it. I've made it all the way to Sky and straight out my side window. I've got a view of like the port on the mainland from the other side of the sea. Just the lights. Bringing you full HD visuals as usual. Yeah, this is uh, a good way to sort of, I don't know, it's definitely a moment. Knowing that I'm looking back, I'm looking back south towards my homeland. And it's like a 15 hour drive if I was to leave now. It's taken me three weeks to the day. I don't know if this is sort of cool or creepy, really. Maybe I've seen too many horror films. And by too many, I mean four. I mean, it's very sort of aesthetic. This kind of tree died tipping over and all the moss and everything. There's like cooking apparatus and stuff down here on like a little camping table. It's obviously set up by community trust for the woodland or something. Or maybe it's my future murderer trying to lure me in. A little sink and everything. I suppose you're right next to the river. Oh, it looks like you'd probably hop across actually. Just braving the wild rapids of the river as it comes crashing down underneath my feet. Will I make it to the other side in one piece? I don't know about this. <laughs> Apparently not. It's about as close as I've got to staying in a bothy. It says it's undergoing archaeological restoration. Excavation, sorry. Hello, yes, we're just restoring your archaeological remains for you. Is that Ben Nevis then? Just peeking out above where that little ship is. Two little sort of peaks. So it should be in roughly that direction, or is it behind the clouds? It's only about 35 miles away, but it says from the peak you can see like 120 miles. I mean, you can certainly see as far as this, it's just whether I'm too low down or something. So, uh, I'm still in the same place, um, Saturday night, because I sort of didn't really feel too brilliant last night. And I was just like, really, yeah, I just didn't feel very well today, so. But I think I'm coming around a little bit, just really tired. It's just, um, I thought I was going down with a cold, but now I think it's just, uh, I think I've just overdone it. Quick health update. I've gone for a little wander. No, you can't really see much. But this is alright. This is um, it's just what I needed. Back up to three stars. It's not much here, but it's, I mean, it's still got fabulous views across to the mainland of Scotland. It's so peaceful as well. Got a great parking space. I've just been watching a boat for like 45 minutes go across the sea. It's really therapeutic actually when you can see it. It's sort of um, you know, in the flesh, if that makes sense. It does not, like, as opposed to watching it on something. I like to watch boats in the flesh. This is the first few midges coming back to life as well, so I can sense that spring is upon us. I wasn't going to film at all today. Earlier I was just, like, lying in bed watching stuff on YouTube. It's kind of the first day where I've done that. But this is so nice around here. This is, like, not even... There's, like, no tourism here whatsoever. This is the least interesting part. <laughs> I just... It's sort of it was six o'clock and I needed someone to park. That island isn't as big as I thought it was. It's like similar size to Sky, Isla Harris. Um, I don't know where I got that from. It's still pretty big though. Like I'd, just, I'd say Sky is pretty big. It's still a good chunk, you know, of area. How big is it? Oh, it's one chunk. I was sort of hoping that there's going to be a path down to the beach or something. But not around here, it's all private land. It's like fields, with, it's like farmland. So I feel like a Scottish farmer. I watched this video last night of a couple that moved onto a small island in the Hebrides somewhere, and uh, now the population of that island is too. <laughs> I could, I reckon, I could do it for a bit. I think I feared isolation, but if you're, if you've got someone with you, it's totally different. On my own, it might be difficult. I could do it short term. I could be like, I could commit to like, you know, there was like a deal or something. I could do it for like six months. I reckon. Like The Shining, you know, I could do the hotel for a bit. Oh, here we go. Here's the views. 
a really gentle waterfall. Bit of an anticlimax. Oh, I could just paint that. If only I knew how to paint. A bit of headland down there looks like it used to be a building or something, but I think it's just rock. More outtakes from the building detective episode. I can't actually get down to the beach tonight because there's no there's no way of getting down there, I don't think. Teleport. I've got a little bit of an obsession. No, it's not really an obsession. Like a fascination with like that coastline down there. There's no access to it as far as I can tell, apart from this private land. But there's loads all around here. It's all just like cordoned off because it's you can't it's like really high up and it's really steep. Yeah, and it's all just like overgrown and stuff. But I just love like that place in uh, Glencoe with the mountain stream coming down at almost like a vertical angle down this huge valley. To think that like there's a good chance that no one's ever walked on it. Yeah, and I just like the idea of kind of getting on it and wandering around, inhabiting it. There's like nothing there and it's so sort of, I mean, it's like a nice calm sunny day, right? But imagine during a storm or blizzard or whatever, completely uninhabitable sort of environment. Like you wouldn't last a night. There's no, there's no cover. There's nowhere to hide. It's like Mars or something, but it's just the fact that it's completely untouched as far as I can tell. Certain... Well, I mean, all the mountains and stuff. Sure, you can walk up Ben Nevis, and, but there's loads that are probably largely unventured, certainly in other countries, unexplored by man. And it's like a completely different world. You sort of imagine what it would have been, what would have been like had civilization not developed. Everything was just left as it was. It's just so interesting to look at. It's like no beach, there's no Starbucks. There's no, there's no noise from people. Yeah, it's just nature in its very element. Just opens up my imagination. I think that's what it is. You can like really sort of think deep about stuff. And uh, yeah, that's it really. <laughs> it's like one of those things where I'm trying to articulate like sort of deep inner thoughts, but sometimes I can't. Like there aren't words. I'm kind of thinking more laterally or visually not sure i'll have to have a think about what i'm thinking about <laughs> and then and then get back to you and let you know i think um it's kind of more touching on my kind of idea of mortality or our place in the universe and so you start questioning kind of like the universe and reality and stuff don't you and uh what what it's all about but not yeah not in a sort of you know, having an existential crisis sort of way, more in a, a doom kind of way. I don't know, like a spiritual sort of questioning reality kind of way. Like it's marking a moment. Yeah. It's almost like my imagination right now has gone to, you know, when people sort of describe like they've had like a near, it's like a dream. That's kind of what it's like. Or like a near death experience. And you have a sort of realisation or you kind of come back to a plane of thought that you kind of touch on only a handful of times in your life. Yeah, kind of like a dream, like I'm trying to figure out what's next and what I need to change or what's lacking and stuff. So I've just been like thinking quite a lot as well. Been on the road for a few weeks. I've just been thinking about it really and <laughs> just noticing the really shoddy paintwork that I haven't finished it. It's going to go around all the edges. It's all a bit half done. But, uh, it's alright, isn't it? Yeah, the only thing that, like, I thought being on the road would convince me that this van is too big and that I didn't need all this. But in some ways, I've kind of gone the other way. And now I'm like, I wish it was just a little bit bigger and, like, a bit longer and stuff. I've got good height in it, but it's just like, it's just like a mess all the time. It's fine, and, but I'm thinking, like, when I say I want a bigger van, I'm actually thinking forwards now, and I'm like, I haven't even considered this yet, but... I was like, what if I just continue on the road for like months or even, yeah, like a bit more long term? Yeah, if it was like a great big bloody transit or like one of those big Renault Masters, it's the width, like, just makes it a little bit tricky. Um, perfectly fine, particularly short term. Yeah, don't know. Just kind of like, 
<laughs> I can't afford it. I, can't, <laughs> like, I haven't even finished this one yet. Alone. I'd love one of those. I just keep seeing the, these guys, you know, with their huge, great big motorhomes and their LDV sort of minibus type things. And I think when I first looked at that, I thought, oh, it's a bit stupid, isn't it? They're too big. Like, why do you need all that? But actually, it's not that big, really, is it, at the end of the day? If you're like a full-time van lifer. So a little bit of extra space and storage. And also, I think the other thing as well is it's all the damp that I've got, all the damp problems and stuff in this van. Yeah, it's like on a rainy day. It's really hard to sort of like air everything out if you've got very limited space. Um, this is only Renault traffic. They're fine. I'm, people bring their families in these, but it's a bit cramped, unless it's like really nice weather, essentially. Because it's been raining, well, it's rained every single day that I've been on the road. I'm now in week four really hard to air anything out like the bed is sopping wet like underneath the mattress all the time so i feel like with a bit more room you can design it different you can i could you know do one of those like sideways beds at the back that people do and sort of sleep diagonally across it in this i can't do it because there's just no width they're like really narrow these it's kind of the only downside yeah and then you can have like loads of room under the bed and like raise it up a bit and, and all this so yeah, that's that's kind of what I was thinking, really. Like, I never thought I would think that. And I still like the idea of having like just like a, a little car and just kind of doing some car camping. Because you can get the mileage there. Because in the big trucks, obviously, all the big vans, it's the fuel economy. And I don't, I don't think I'm... I'm just kind of throwing ideas around. It's like once you do one thing, you kind of opens up your mind a little bit, doesn't it? And th this is great. This has got, like, everything I need for... It's just the comfort aspect. Because, you know, there's no shower. Obviously, you can shower outside and stuff. But I've only got so much water. In Scotland, it's actually fine. Because there's so many stops and places to stay overnight. Like, you could actually do it semi-long term. But in the south of England, it's a lot more competitive to find, like, free camping spots. I don't know why I'm filming this with, like, the worst part of my conversion. <laughs> it's, like, the worst... I haven't finished painting. I've done one coat of paint on this van, but... Everything's like, everything's kind of like, yeah. It's great when you shut the door, you don't know it. Should have done like that. So I think it's the first time where I've always been in house shares and rented accommodation with other people. And I'm like, if I had a big fucking van, I wouldn't like, at least for the foreseeable future, you could kind of just carry on doing this, couldn't you? And to be honest, I could, or might even carry on doing it. I'm going to make some changes to this when I get back. I've already, <laughs> I've already taken, I've got like doors on the bottom of the bed, along the bottom, like where the storage is. I've already taken one of them off to try and get some ventilation under the bed. I might try and remove, I might actually remove the, uh, like the bed base as well and just have slats, but they're quite gappy. So yeah. Yeah, this is not a van tour video, but this is just a quick peek. Yeah, I'll do a proper van tour video at some point. Full length, uncut. So it's like, I've got this gap to walk along, but it's usually just full up with crap <laughs> my clothes. So I need to bring less next time. Famous last words. And uh, that's it. There's a crisp cupboard. So it's, it's just, um, yeah, it's perfectly fine in the evenings. Yeah, when it's dark. But uh, it's, not, it's not that big. The van. But it's like, I can stand in it. That was the deal breaker. I couldn't do, like, oh, you'd have to be like this high all the time in like a VW. Yeah, it's probably similar size to a V-Dove, maybe a touch narrower, but I'm not sure. Maybe I'm wrong. I needed to design it so that the bed is always out, because it was just too much faffing around, moving everything around to try and make the bed every night. That's why I've sort of lost space, and also I wanted kind of a big sink, because then you just don't have to continuously wash up. And you can wash in it a little bit, like wash your hair or whatever. So I think I'm going to keep this and uh, kind of just make a few mods, like... I might remove all the doors on the bottom of this, get rid of some of the clutter, and just like let it air out a lot more and see if that helps with the condensation issue. And somehow block, I think it's going up through, there must be gaps somewhere, so it gets up into the ceiling every time I use a hop, the steam gets up and then it must run down the walls or something on the back. I'm going to check actually, let's see what we're doing today. <laughs> Got the carrier bag system. Uh, I mean it feels drier. So maybe that, maybe that has helped, just airing everything out a lot more. I've not taken the mattress off today, but a bit of van bed frame ASMR. Yeah, it's looking better today. Okay. And it did rain as well, so that's a good sign. Yeah, maybe it's just way too much condensation. 
next time. This is Walter Hartwell White. I bet you can swim out a lot. Look how clear that water is.